Good morning. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dobbin 6605 Welcome back. Yes, back to the Abyss 6605 interview. Season 1, episode 11. Now, it's been two months since I did an episode 10, which is on Thailand 264. He is the creator of Tyler Tale, so if you haven't watched it out then. What are you doing here? Go watch it, okay? Now, this is Ray Dog Games. He is the creator of The End of Disney and Five Nights at Billy. So, we have two YouTube comments, which is Damon Gamer 727 and Cubby 2002. So, I'll do my random questions first because you. Because I this will like take a longer day so to do YouTube comments. Sound fair? Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay. Sounds okay. Question number Question one. Question number one. Why do you have the idea to make the end of this? Um My idea with um trying to recreate the end of Disney is um back a few months back, when I made my own version, my own take on Hellbound Photo Negative Mickey, which is how I would see it if the end of Disney was remade. So I, when I got done with it, I thought it turned out to be perfect. Then, later on afterwards, I started making more characters, and then I started coming up with the idea of, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do this reimagining. I'm gonna go ahead and make this reimagining into pretty much a reality. Pretty much. Oh, that's interesting. I kind of like. I mean, the first thing that Fortnite community does is. I mean, I know he started like creating the NFC in 2016, and yeah. since then you decided to remake it, right? Yeah. All right. Interesting. All right. Question number two, how do you come with the idea to make Five Nights at Billy's? Oh yeah, this one is very interesting. So, like like in the, um, like what it said in the Game Joe page, it has quite a history to it. So, back in 2012 of Christmas, I've gotten a Cuddle Luppet, which is basically a blanket and puppet mushed up together. He's a, it was a, well, it still is, still is here today, but it's a yellow dog. It's basically a yellow dog character. I came up with the concept of his character, the background and stuff, and when I've been hearing about the fan games and stuff, like Fight to Candies and such, I thought, you know, how about I can try and come up with a fan game I did with my character. So of course I came up with more characters along the way before I decided this idea. I came up with Norm, which is the crocodile. And then I also came up with Bella, who is the girl character, of course. Because I also wanted to include a girl character. So of course back then in 2016 I didn't really make a game, but neither in 2017, because that's when I was concepting the entire story of how I would see it. But then in 2018, that's when I started doing the legit game, which was not a very good start, because I, I was still, like, you know, trying to get up there and stuff with designs and stuff, gameplay, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, because it's basically played out as, like, Finance and Treasure Island, but except showing off cameras, you can play Bacon Sizzling noises in the cameras. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the same, game, the same thing goes for me too, but, like, I come up with the idea called Hobbit Tale. Hobbit Tale is a Undertale fan game, so... And I decided to, like, do that in June of 2020, right now, since... I know some, like, Toby Fox from Star Trek Undertale in 2015, and my god, does it blew the viewers up? And since yeah. I know Jack with the Kai play it, and I since I watched Jack with the Kai play it, like he was out, he was so 
shocked about like about like Toby Fox. Like literally every time um every time about the true pacifist um route I get I get so shocked when Flowey is Azrael and since since it goes That's on fun. like it's literally like whole I mean there's some there's some unreasonable questions here in Undertale, but but in Delta in Chapter One, it's not a sequel to Undertale, but it's probably a prequel to Undertale. Since since Toby Fox began making Delta in 2012, after he made Undertale, which is the demo of that in 2013 since he released, so. Oh. He decided to make um, Delta in 2018. So, and he decided to make Delta in Chapter 1. So, I know I really like um, Delta in Chapter 1 better than Undertale because I really like the three heroes fighting someone. And it's just awesome to see how much. It's way more better than, you know, fighting with the one human thing. And it's just like. Way better because Toby, like Fox, had accomplished himself so much, and I can't wait for Delta in Chapter Two, which is coming out on December thirty first this year. So, God, I hope you guys are excited. All right, sounds interesting. Now I know making games are hard enough since uh, since I quit Obitil because you know making games are hard and I know the same thing that goes to Fall Negative Mickey like I know like like he like, struggles he with the pick size mechanic and I see how I see how Bud reacts to that and, and he's like so stressed of that so yeah, yeah. Even with um, the even with the original Lost Ones 2, how it was also a pain in the neck to code that game too. But in the Lost Ones Remastered, Lost Ones 2, Lost Ones 2 Remastered, it was easier. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, but also interesting at, at the same time. Yeah. Number three. What is your favorite FNAF fan game? Ooh, I have a lot of favorites, but if. If I have to choose my top number one, it would probably have to be Finance and Candies 3. My favorite one would have to be Finance and Bugger Duty. I just love the funny moments here right now, and I just love it so much. Because, like, it literally, really great, it really has a, has the best FNAF fan game. Which is like way yeah. more kind of better than the Lost of Remastered because Lost of Remastered yeah. is my least favorite because the guy Fair who's enough. getting cocky, I don't, I don't know why, but still he gets cocky for some reasons. I don't, I don't like it. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't see that in a way. How oh, it's just not, not really. Not really that good, but as long as there's effort into it, then that's all I really care about, really. Yeah, even mm -hmm. even when the guy gets even more cockier and night forward. And, and oh I yeah. Know, yeah, I know that. Like he really like um like said through things about you know the devil of monsters. I don't know why he said that. Good God. Yeah, especially being part of the ritual or a former member of the ritual. It's quite nuts. Yeah, it is nuts, isn't it? Number four. What is your favorite color? Red. I don't know why, but I think it's because of the character Red from Angry Birds. Because I just. I just freaking. I just. Have a love. I just have a some sort of thing with the character, including with him, and such, including in the movie. Like I definitely feel how he feels, really. But despite the character, I just I just like the color in general. Yeah, my 
My favorite color is the first one will be orange, the second blue, and the third green. Those so those are my three colors. Alright. Uh, and still I do I do have the green screen, but not in the back of mine, which is not this next not next to me, so I do have it in in somewhere in the kitchen. Oh, okay. Number five. Number what is your favorite drink? My favorite drink. Um, I mean, I do like drinking water, but if I had to choose a soda or something, it would have to be orange Fanta, or just orange soda in general, like Crush or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't drink too many sodas, and I, and I know it's unhealthy for me since I drink water so much because it's healthier. Yeah, that's also that's also my sister too because for some reason she can't drink she can't drink sodas anymore. Like she used to, but she doesn't now. She just drinks she just drinks water. Which I don't really blame her. It's fine. Obviously not everyone has to drink sodas. It's got a patch of water in your system. Yeah. Yeah. Number six. What is your least favorite FNAF fan game? My least favorite FNAF game of mine. Um. Pretty much Nightmare Before Disney V1. From the graphics, from the gameplay, it was. Gameplay was boring. The graphics were terrible, the models looked ugly. Um, I mean, of course, like with everyone back then, they thought it, w it looked good, but looking back, it, it was just crap. So, yeah, I think I think I would have to say Nightmare Before Disney version 1, back in March of 2016. My least favorite FNAF fan game will have to be same thing goes to the Lost Ones Remastered, but I really like the concept that Fortnite and Mickey like does that, and it and I and I, yeah. and I really like it because like the remastered feels different than the original Lost Ones since the re yeah. the Lost Ones Remastered has a better um better better better. Like, better. I don't know what like I where I was saying, I but. So, like, I'm gonna, like, explain the story of that, but, you know, like, the guy no, is getting God. hockey, it's just not cool, though, yeah. so, so, yeah, it's just so, really not really. cool. Yeah. Number seven, what is your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show. I have quite a lot, but... If I had to choose, probably South Park. <laughs> probably because of the comedy and stuff. If I had to choose, if I had to choose my own favorite TV show, then that will be Thomas and Friends. Since Thomas and Friends is oh, yeah. just the best TV show I love, and and I really like it because it has, I mean, it has a better um, history and. There are five series. There are the classic series, the new series, the CGI series, the BWBA series, and the two-day series. Which, um, you know, Mattel is gonna like, um, help with Novella with the 2D series, which is in series 25. This is the first series, which are gonna have two days, 2D series. Now. So, yeah. And here's a fun fact about me with Thomas and Friends. When I was a kid, I used to have a lot of merchandise of Thomas and Friends. Like I was a super fan of it. Like I had a lot of I had a lot of track masters, the DVDs, the little um wooden the little wooden little wooden like railroad figurines or whatever they are. That you would probably like get at like places that they don't have or something. But yeah, I used to have pretty much what you could say everything. My, right favorite, now. my favorite 
my favorite Thomas and Friends character will have to be Thomas the Tank Engine. Not season 13 through 16, because Shire Mill destroyed Thomas. But I mm. just love him for the new theory. I just like, like him so much. I mean, he never gets in trouble. I mean, he does get in trouble since thir season 13 through 16. And, but in well, yeah. seasons 8 through 12, I mean, he never I mean, gets in trouble. Like, Thomas in the billboard, he doesn't say Thomas at all. He's just like, dead quiet. He, he does get trouble with James, Emily, Gordon, and yeah, everyone. But, like, to be honest, I don't really like that episode because, I mean, I mean, not to blame on Thomas, but... It's just the Italian picture's fault, but why did Italian picture move Diesel? I mean, Diesel. Because, like, they don't want to, like, see Thomas? But, I don't know, but that's kind of been, To me, that's just so... So, uh, so bad to watch it, and I don't like it, but still, I mean, it's not Diesel's fault, but... Seriously, a child picture wouldn't uh, like move. It's like Thomas would have like um um said the Italian picture earlier, but I don't know why. But it shows like this episode just confuses me a lot. So yeah. Yeah, and that's pretty much like with everything. Like there could there could be episodes where it could confuse the viewers on what is going on. And it could probably send, like, criticisms to them, I guess. So, yeah. Okay, so, number eight. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie? It would have to be... For horror, Halloween 2000, for Halloween 2018. Okay, my favorite movie will have to be Thomas and Friends The, the Adventure because it's not like a movie, it's like a special kind of type of thing. Yeah. And I kind of really like when there's like throwback of season one of that since they, all, they yeah. also remastered the season one of that and i just love it by far so much yeah and i remember seeing it too i thought i thought it was good for like a origin story especially how how thomas became what he is today yeah he is I mean, I'm... Yeah. number nine how old are you i am 16. I'm a young adult. I'm a young adult. <laughs> Alright. Cheers, mate. Yep. Cheers, yep. Mike! <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. Number 10. What is your favorite YouTuber? Um, The Next Genius. My favorite YouTuber <laughs> had to be Jax of the Guy. I mean, not to like. I mean. Markiplier is my least favorite YouTuber because the voice of him is like, is kind of annoying, but Jax of the Kai's voice is pretty better than Markiplier because he is Irish, I mean no offense, so I really kind of just like the, this, 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 the voice, what he does for the intro, I mean, he reminds me of the step up narration of Michael Angelus from the, U the UK of Thomas and Friends, and I just love him by now since I'm, he died on, since Michael Angelus died on May 30th, 2020. Like, literally. May oh. this dude rest in peace, like, for real. Yeah. That's, that's quite sad. <laughs> Especially for A. Like, that's gotta be pretty disappointing right there. Yeah, since Driver Joe, um, of 
Oh, a tribute, a tribute to my glasses, and, and I did the same thing for mine. And, and I don't like Tyler and Twitch just before I posted the Michael Angela's death. I was so shocked about hearing it. I was so shocked about hearing it. I was extremely shocked to hear her Stan Lee's death back in 2018 when my mom said, did you know that Stan Lee died today? I was like, what? And then she was like, yeah, he he passed away today. And I, I was, it, it broke me really. Cause you know, he created everything in Marvel. He created Spider-Man, he created the Hulk, he created Iron Man, he created all of those characters. And it was really sad to see him go. Yeah, he is always a legend, always like le honestly. Yeah, legends never die. <laughs> Number 11. What do you do at school after the coronavirus in the past year? Um, with school, I just try to... Just try to get some work done, really. Make sure that, um... I do the best that I can, really. Basically, I, I just do what I do. Make sure that I I get most most stuff done, so that um there's not like a whole lot piling on me. Like um on some days, like when one of my friends Julia was moving away, I started getting upset and wasn't that very motivated to do a whole lot of work. So, yeah. Okay. So, you know, since I graduate um, West Ham Academy, aka the high school, back in June of 2020, now, in, now since then, October 12th, I decided to go to that real foundation where I meet new friends. Now I have friends like Dennis. I got, I love I, Dennis so much, like literally, he is my friend so much, and we used to tease Anthony, like so much, like literally, uh, it's just pretty great. Yeah, of course, I do got, I do got more friends as well, like especially after Julia left, like, of course, I got a hell of a lot of friends outside of school too. So, yeah. Number 12. Number 12. Did you watch Ed's World, yes or no? Um, yeah. I mean, my brother was also watching it, was also watching it too, so, yeah. What is your what favorite is Ed's World episode? Hmm. If I had to choose, or try to pull one out that I can remember. I don't watch it a whole lot. Probably probably the one with the amusement park. Like with the zombies and stuff. I think it's Deadland or something. I may be wrong. Hardcore fans are probably gonna be like, bro, you just said it wrong. It's <laughs> My favorite Ed's World episode is WT Future. And I like it because, like, I've never seen Future Ed. Like, literally. I'm trying to, like, kill the original Ed himself. <laughs> Number 13. Nope. What, what is your favorite video game? My favorite video game. Now, of course, like with movies and such, I have, have a bunch. Like, aside, if I had to choose a side from FNAF, it would have to be Angry Birds. My favorite game would have to be Chicken Invaders, Riddle School, and Wonderland. Since Riddle mm. School got the second best, since I really like John Chrome's animations, his animations are good, especially with the last game that he's making on is Real Transfer 2, which is published on 2016. Hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. And All I right. really kind of like the story a bit. The story of when there's like, when a Riddle School 4 
comes out, like, I know people expecting that is a troll game, so it is a troll game, so, yeah. <laughs> so, and I kind of just uh, like how John, John of Chrome trolls, like, everybody, like, in a real go far when Philly Tree dies, good god. And, oh, man. Oh. Like, I like, I mean, I never expect to, like, like real school four that much, but I think people just disagree with the real school four. And then since, <laughs> like since people out there just don't like just it, don't but like it, they but... like j because John L. Chrome just trolled them, like literally. But just honestly, troll. it's it's the real story of real school five since they hear that I feel like tree dies in a pit of lava before that he was awakened on his face thing, which is some kind of panic kind of thing i'm not sure what it is but still like i know it's a better story and i love bill like killing his friends which is pretty offensive but i mean i know that john o'chrome has the attention to do it so he does it so well since he kills three of his since Philip Tree kills three of his friends and I mean for in their dreams. But good god that was just a nightmare like when like imagine that when people like kill your dream instead like good god that was the strangest yeah. thing like clearly it's gotta be intense right there though yeah, imagine if, like, yo, Kara from Undertale, Genocide, good god. Good lord. <laughs> but I really I... like the story of Four or... School 5, because, like, I mean, I know it's my second best game, but I like it so much, because John Crum had the effort to do it, and I like him. Since the real transfer, I... I... Don't kind of like it, but this is being a, a, fool, a fool in Real Transfer 2 since he basically decided to become like Flowey from Undertale and decide, decides to freeze the whole planet, which couldn't fit. Quiz, sorry, and since Quiz decides to commit suicide. I mean, I don't know why he wanted to commit suicide, but still, like, Quiz and Diz commit suicide, suicide for themselves, and then the end of that real, the real transfer to is, and so, yeah, basically, it's just all of them, so, yeah, and I really like Chicken Invaders. Chicken Invaders is my first best game of all things to interact with studios. You're a legend, my man, and he is awesome so much because, like, he he put the Chicken Bears 5, which reminds me of Star Wars so much, and I really like it so much. So, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. This is Chicken Bears. Okay. So, from the to it, I'm guessing it's like some sort of parody of Space Invaders, but just with chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Number 14. Did you have any future plans? If that's so, then what would it be? Um... For future plans for projects, I do plan on some sort of like... Some sort of reboot kind of thing for the original story of Five Nights at Billy's. Like having it like sort of retold while at the same time it's technically reimagined with with the new character with the characters being completely redesigned with um with um, new mechanics, new visuals and stuff like that. And yeah. Oh for Treasure Island fan games? I'm not fully sure yet. Is with, is the end of Disney is basically one of my biggest focuses right now. 
But after that, I'm not fully sure. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks to you, but it's quite different. So, so the future plans that I'll be like, having when I'll reach a million subscribers sometimes in the end of Dodge Boy 2, but I know some people like, and I will. Since people like read, since people like watch my videos and the views are gonna go to a million, and my channel definitely go to a million right there. And honestly, I'll be doing a bigger vlog about a story about myself. So yeah, that'd be something to celebrate. It. Cause why not? Yeah, why not? Number fifteen. Do you think that coronavirus will end or will go on forever? Um, going on forever part, I don't think so. The going away part, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll go away sooner. But of course, it just keeps, but of course, more bad things keep on happening. So it kind of makes me lose some hope. But with um, with them working on a vaccine and stuff, I'm. It just gives me some, some, I guess, some sparks of hope that it'll hopefully go away sooner than we think. But again, we don't know yet. So, yeah. My planning on that will go on forever. Since I know, I know people get patient. Since I mean, hey, just be patient. I mean, I know it will probably end on 2021 or on the end of 20. So, yeah, just be patient. Man. Just be patient, okay? Well, yeah. Number six, no, no. What is your favorite music genre? Ooh. Um, basically, it would have to be metal. I don't know why, I just... I just love, I just like listening to it, especially like whenever I'm like walking or something. I just, I just have it, I just have it in my, in my ears, stuff like that. Really. My favorite music genre will have to be orchestra. The first one, the second rock, and then the third one, relaxing. Since I know I get, I know I, I know I can't. Handle too much of the hyperactive stuff because since I since I would listen to relaxing music when I calm myself down. So yeah. yeah, that's why that's why I calm myself down when I listen to relaxing music. But orchestra, orchestra is a legend, like clearly, like honestly, because Michael Daniel and Junior Campbell from Thomas and Friends Season 3 through 7 They are a legend when it comes to orchestra music Like Rusty, Rescue Stephanie, Henry Forrest Instrumental The Storm Team And all of that because I, I just love them so much So yeah Seventeen. What is your favorite food? Chicken. Fried chicken. I mean, of course, I'm very picky, so I eat a lot of chicken-based stuff. Well, kind of. I don't really eat teriyaki or chicken soup for some reason, because I, I'm guessing I'm that picky. I, I don't know. But I just like I eat chicken. My favorite food will have to be spinach. Since I know it's a reference to Popeye. Who does that? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Popeye was Popeye was the goat. I remember watching the cartoon suit. So yeah. Number 18. Number 18. What do you play besides FNAF? Um, Call of Duty, Resident Evil, um, aside from Angry Birds, which I haven't played for a long time. Yeah, just stuff like that, like Resident Evil or Call of Duty. Or... Number 19, 
before yeah. even talking. But to be honest, I do get tired of an app when there is the same formula over and over again. And, and this one yeah. with Bud saying that it's true, so that's yeah. Fine. Yeah, I don't blame people for getting tired of the same thing over and over again. Like, I, of course, with that, I have to respect. Just like everyone else. Number 20. What is your favorite oh. restaurant? My favorite restaurant? That's the call. Favorite restaurant is KFC. Any nostalgic game. That's game. Yeah. What it is. The nostalgic games are Temple Run, Angry Birds, or at least some of the classic games. Um, let's see. Jetpack Joyride was another good was another good one. Um, I'm trying to think. But of course, there's a there's a lot. There's a whole lot of nostalgia games out there. Oh, Fruit Ninja is one of them. That's another good one. Medal of Honor. I love I love the Medal of Honor games. Yeah, I do play Angry Birds 6012 since I was a little kid. But since now, I just started to hate it because, like, I know it's just a bad game, but... To be honest, I just don't like it so much, I and mean, then, seriously, it's, I, mean, I know, like, since 2015, I stopped playing Angry Birds because it's kind of stressful, to be honest, because some of the levels are stressful. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, like with everything, it's tend to be hard, it's tend to get harder. What is your favorite Undertale character? Um, probably Sans. Yeah, Sans. Because you know the Megalovania memes of that. Oh, jeez. It's quite funny to think about. Yeah, honestly. My number one favorite Undertale character will have to be Azrael Dreamer since he was a great villain. And honestly, he's way more better than Flowey. Since Photoshop Flowey is ridiculous in the final boss, which is pretty bad. But the true pacifist, people are people shocked are that Flowey is Azrael. And, and they're like so shocked. I mean, literally. I mean, the reaction of that so much. Big time. Yeah. yeah, hold on. I'm gonna have to go ahead and with i'm gonna go ahead and help out with something because apparently they brought some stuff home so probably gonna have to be a little afk or something all right take your time i guess yeah all right it's got to be some crystal okay. yeah that is it for my random question so let's go on to the two YouTube comments. YouTube comments. So, this right. is from Damon Gamer 727 What inspired you to create Five Nights at Billy? The inspiration, mainly with PNM games, especially with Five Nights at Billy's around 2017. Like, especially how good it looked back then. I thought, oh my god, this looked so good. I could probably. Use using these for inspirations and stuff for FNAB. Interesting. Interesting. Now here's yeah. the uh, last and funny question. This is from Comfy Thousand Cell Thousand Two. Oh Are you a snail? <laughs> <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> Did that answer the question right there? Yeah, okay. Is it scary? Yeah, it's, 
yeah, that's it yeah, for that's the interview. So yeah, so next time on episode 12, I'll be interviewing that Cyber Channel and Tulip Thumb. So those are the two ones I'll be interviewing. So yeah. And, and, and yeah, thank you yeah. for like all the interview, Way Dog Game. It was a pleasure to be here, man. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out on episode 10, which is the previous episode on Tyler 264. So, yeah. Peace out.